الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد. so مفتي محمود أشرف عثماني رحمة الله عليه is the nephew of مفتي تقي عثماني سبحان الله حفظه الله. so he mentions one of his stories a life incident. so he said that one year somebody made an offer for him to go for Hajj. it could be a travel agent. maybe somebody saying do a Hajj badal on my behalf or something. so somebody offered him that you know do Hajj. With me, group leader, whatever it could have been. So he said, when this offer was made, I done mashura with my elders. So again, he's a teacher of hadith. Before he came to Karachi, he used to teach in Lahore, that Jamia Shafi'i in Lahore. So he was teaching hadith for a very long time. An alim, a scholar, son of a great poet, grandson of a great mufti. But what did he do? Mashura. The first point for this is take mashura. Yes, when you have Ra'yul Alili Alilun. When you are you yourself in something, you can't really tell what the other perspective is. You understand? So when you reach the age of bulu, you come balik, then your akal is tam. Your akal becomes complete. That's why you're responsible for your actions. So that's why. But there's something on top of akal. What is what? Tajraba. Experience. And you can never, you just have to go through certain things in life. You can read a lot, so it'll, it'll increase, your, it'll increase your experience. Sit with people who, you know, give you advice. Who are experiencing a lot of things, you can learn faster, but you, it still takes time. It's a process. You can't you can't just skip it. You can make it go faster. You can experience quicker and learn a lot of things quicker. But certain things in life you have to go through experience. And that's why I take mashura from your elders, from your parents, your teachers, people in a position. So even we we even acknowledge the need for mashura. What do you do for, what do you do for buy a product? What's that what you do? Reviews. What's the what's the review? Unless it's paid for. You know, it's mashura. So a genuine review is a mashura. That you you're not doing verbally saying, tell me how the product is. You're saying, well, this person is writing what his experiences are, and then you go to some local reviews, video reviews, written reviews. Yes, yeah, mashura. You understand? But so in life, so if you got a, and again, different people. You want to buy a car? What do you got? Mechanic. He's got experience in that field. So he said to his elder, he said, yes, his elders, what should I do? Number one. So number two, he said, I don't think this. He didn't say who it was, but he had a few elders in his life. So he said, they gave me advice that it's not monasim. To take such a big ehsan of somebody, it's not munasib, it's not appropriate. To take such a big ehsan, a big favor, such a large favor. So we, we live as brothers, we live as sisters, we live in a community. So the Prophet says, take hadaya, give hadaya. But you select hadaya, which are gifts, which are khafiful mahmil. It's not too burdensome, like itar, small little miswak, something. It is what it goes for hajj, small little some dates, some itar, something like this. Minor, it is yes, something like huge. But here it is a Mercedes Benz. None of you guys are getting Mercedes Benz anyway, so it's not. But <laughs> yes, perhaps. Say, no, nah, no, nah, it's too much. Why? Because what happens? It's like, now it's like you feel. What's a, what's a proverb come up in Muntakhabat later on? Al insanu Abdul Ihsan. What's lobbying about? Why do they lobby people? They're not lobbying because they like them. Here's gifts for me. They lobby the meaning, I'm doing a favor upon you, so therefore your mouth will speak as I say. That's what lobbying is. Le legal bribery. So when you, when, you, when you take money from somebody, what happens straight away? So that's why you have That's why they lobby. So you have in America have the gun lobbies and you have Fulan lobby and Fulan lobby. Here it happens as well. So it's basically first world corruption. So one is official and one is unofficial. Like you give a gift. You give a gift, what happens now? It's like, oof, something happens. So he said, I said, I take the mashura. And he goes, a, a few, that's the first thing. So if you don't, so let's so pause here. Another lesson we learn from here is live life according to your means. If you can't afford Hajj, don't go for Hajj. Why? Like, okay, what is Shia? I want to go for Hajj. Brilliant. No, 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 no. But if you can't afford it, don't go. I want to see Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam city, you want to go there. So do I. If you can't afford it, then don't go. Being here and having desire, being in a city away from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and not going to Mecca, it's beneficial for you. Are you staying here? And that desire to go there is that burning in your heart and more beneficial. Allah doesn't want you to go, they don't go. Instead of taking a loan, a qaras, this is something like about Hajj and Umrah. So even day to day activities, buy a car that you can afford, buy clothes that you can afford. Don't try to live with anybody's else's standards. Live on your own standards. And taking it, so number one is don't waste money. Yes, don't waste money. And number two is uh, don't take loan. Loan, unnecessarily. Sometimes a genuine, like for example, you've got a house, or something like important, your roof's leaking, so I can't take a loan. Let the roof leak for the next two months, so I can get the wages. Not that, but you get it. So unnecessarily taking a loan, avoid a loan. And when Hadith the Prophet said, um, I can't remember the Hadith, but something, and the Dain. Do you know the Hadith? The Dain comes in. So the Prophet sought refuge for something. And it's kufr, well, it was kufr and dain. So he said, like, you asking refuge from dain and kufr in the same sentence, like, it doesn't really match. One is disbelief and one is taking money. 
Prophet said, yes, that can happen. Because when you have a lot of dain, a lot of qarz upon you, you've got to pay it back. You're struggling. What happens then? You get tied down. So you end up doing, it can lead to kufr in meaning of ungratefulness. And it can also lead to a situation where a person leaves Islam. Why do you have all these, uh, all these in the third world countries, well, p- p- poor areas, where do they have? Well, not monasteries, what do you call them? Missionaries. Because why? People are poor. So use money to try to uh, buy over their faith. So as much as you have, Allah has made money, qiyaman. A means where you can survive. So don't waste money and be financially savvy. A lot of our parents, grandparents, great grandparents, when they came to these countries, they were poor, had nothing. So they were very savvy in their wealth. They saved up, they spent economically. Second generation, third generation, now it's like money comes, money goes. We don't understand what it's like. So make sure you is very be savvy in your finances. Don't take loans unnecessary. And they weren't going on. I said no. I said no. Because my elder said don't go. It was a few weeks later, a few months later, a year later, the same, whether it was the estate, not estate agent, whether a travel agent, whether it was a friend, whether it was somebody who wanted me to go for Hajj, he was going to pay for the Hajj. Something happened and a fatwa came to the Darul Iftar, like case going to the Darul Iftar, and was against that person. Like the decision would not have pleased him. Then I realized that was the wisdom of our elders. That I didn't do that Hajj. If not, I would have been, I would still have to give the same fatwa, but you would feel so embarrassed. You would feel a bit like, you get it, you would feel a bit like tied down. So I didn't take that Hajj, so now I'm a free person. I'm not an Abda, that person. So he said that is fine in this. So, from this one story, uh, we learned a few lessons. Number one is, take mashura. Number two is, be savvy in your expenditures. If you want to say, don't take loans. Fahim? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us ability to act upon this and all the advices that we have. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi kama nashadu la ilaha illa anta wa nastaghfiru kama natubu ilayhi.